All right, you guys, I have a really fun tutorial for you guys today. I'm sure you've seen it's nothing new to the fashion world, but all of those blanket scarves that everyone is making slash wearing, you see all the fashion bloggers, you know, piling them on and they're really full and voluminous around your neck and creates just a really, really cute accent to what can be a rather boring or basic outfit. Plus it also serves to keep you warm. The problem that I have with blanket scarves are that they take an insane amount of fabric. So the flannels that you find in the fabric stores are coming in 45 inch widths. And then in order to make the blanket scarf and make it super full, you need two, two and a half yards and that is just no bueno for me. So I have hacked a little way for you to get the look of a blanket scarf with half the fabric. So I have a yard of fabric here. Actually, this is like a yard and eight inches or something like that. I got this in the remnants bin, in the end of bolt sale, any of those things that you see either in person in fabric stores or online on fabric stores. This is a great project for those. Or uh, if you have scraps left over, like if you've made flannel pajamas or something and you have a pretty decent uh, three quarters of a yard at least uh, of flannel fabric, this little tutorial slash hack would be really great for that leftover fabric. So it is so, so easy uh, to do. It's just a matter of manipulating a square or rectangle of fabric into something very long so that you can wrap it around yourself multiple times. So what you're going to do is take your fabric right now. It's selvage to selvage. These are the selvage ends over here. And I'm going to take that. I'm going to fold it into thirds or quarters, depending on how wide your fabric is and how long it is. I think mine is wide enough to do quarters. So on each of these little quarter marks that I have just made by folding it in on itself, like an envelope, and then in half again, now I have a quarter of my width of the selvage end, and I'm just gonna make little snips in the fabric. Then I'm going to find the closest, like one snip would be this line here, and I'm gonna cut straight down all along that line, the entire length of the fabric. Then I'll go to the halfway point, find this little guy here, and cut straight line all the way down using the plaid as a guide to cut my strips of fabric. So when I'm done, I'm gonna have four strips of fabric, the length of what I have here. So if you have a 45, 44 inch width fabric, then you're probably only gonna get three panels. If you have something a little bit wider, you can get four panels. But you want it to be about a foot wide by the length of fabric that you have, whatever, if it's three quarters of a yard, a yard, whatever it is. Okay, so let me cut those and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now I have my four strips of the flannel. I've cut it into quarters. You either, you're probably gonna have three, depending on the width of your fabric. But now you want to take them right sides together, or as best you can tell, the flannel's kind of the same um, wrong side to right side. But you wanna put uh, two of the short ends together so that um, I like to sew that at a one inch seam allowance that is going to help us on our next step. So sew that at one inch seam allowance, do the same thing for the other two, then attach those two together and then attach those ends that you have attach those together as well, all at one inch seam allowances so that we have one gigantor tube of fabric. <laughs> Do you see where we're going with this yet? <laughs> okay, I've got my humongous tube of, <laughs> of fabric. Uh, I ended up sewing mine at one and a half inches. Uh, we are going to end up fringing the seam allowances of what we just sewed together. So I'm just going to have a little bit longer fringe. If you did a one inch, you'll have a little bit shorter, two inches, three inches, you could really go crazy as to how much, how long you want the fringe of the seam allowances to be. I'm also going to fringe both sides. 
so this outer side and this outer side as well those i really only like to do half an inch one because fringing is a very tedious monotonous process and as you can see we have a lot of it to fringe so i like to do half an inch plus i kind of feel like the different fringe lengths adds a little bit of interest this is definitely an organic type of just go with it project you're not even going to be too too precise with the seam allowances as you can see on this one here the the bottom seam allowance is much wider than the um the seam allowance before it so i can go in and trim that down a little bit but i really want to use the um the stripes to have my straight line so i might even just leave it you have all those choices because what you're going to end up doing and even how you wear these kind of scarves is not neat and orderly there is not a precise way to to wear it or even fold it but what i'll do is i will after it's all fringed and ready to go i will take it um, as close to the midway range as i can put those two together and now I have two loops right so now I'm going to loop one one side and loop one the other side and what you're going to end up with is a bundle that has all these different layers of or different lengths of loops right can you see I've got a smaller one a medium one and a longer one that way when you put it on don't forget a loop <laughs> when you, oh I forgot a loop when you put it on, I forgot two loops. Okay. When you put it on, there we go. And you have all this fringe and you have all of these like different, you know, stripes going all these different ways. You can like play around with it, get the links and you can see it really does start to like fill out this area of your body, just like a blanket scarf would, except we had, didn't need all that fabric. We needed like half of what most of the blanket scarf tutorials call for. So I think this is a super, super fun, inexpensive way to use up scraps, uh, buy some of those end of bolt sale pieces that you see and create a really cute, fun accessory. It also happens to be a fantastic gift <laughs> um, where it looks like you spent a ton of money on all this yardage of fabric, but really um, we kind of just use a little bit of geometry to hack the system. So grab your seam ripper, the, uh, the best way to fringe something, in my opinion, the, the least annoying way is to take whatever area that you are fringing, like let's say we're gonna fringe this seam allowance here, and snip into it every, I don't know, three or four inches, all the way up to the threads, um, the seam allowance, and then that way you have much smaller sections. Now we only have this little itty bitty section um, grab your seam ripper and start pulling everything apart. You can do some of the vertical ones to release the horizontal ones like so, but you only have a little itty bitty bit to worry about at a time. You're not trying to fringe, you know, a whole foot of fabric, which as you can see would be not impossible, but just, you know, really frustrating. This one happens to be a kind of very cottony, very loose woven cotton. So these are kind of like ripping apart, but as you can see, you get going with it. And because we're using the smaller sections, um, it's kind of just pulling out a lot easier. And you can see, I've already got, you know, three eighths of an inch fringed. So I would fringe this whole section, then I would fringe this whole section, then go to the middle part, fringe both of these sections. It's really one of those things where you just gotta, like instead of Netflix and chill, it's Netflix and fringe. In fact, I'm gonna make that a thing. I'm gonna put that on social media and it is gonna be my new slogan for this little project. But I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys make tons and tons and tons of these, but that's gonna do it for me today. I will see you all very soon. Bye.